Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? My name is Tay, and welcome back to my channel, Inspire Me, where I talk about current or relatable topics, all from a godly perspective, and today's topic is called, Stop Taking Everything for a Joke. Now, I wanted to talk about this because I, I know people say, wait a minute, <laughs> the queen are always laughing. It's a time to joke, and then it's a time to stop joking, and you gotta know what to not joke about. First, I don't know what led me to read about Abraham again even though of course I read it before I think about with Lot and stuff like that that's probably why so I read it again like from like how did it get started with Abraham this is to the time where God said he gonna destroy pretty much Sodom and Gomorrah because of all the sin so Lot pretty much warned the Bible said this is where the go-to scripture gonna come from it said that Lot warned I'm gonna just paraphrase it said that Lot warned his son-in-laws, saying, like, y'all got to get out. Get out, because God's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, who was warning them. You know what these men did? The Bible said they took it as a joke. The only people that escaped, of course, it was Abraham, you know, his wife and stuff like that. His thing is like his cattle and everything. But it was also Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. His sons-in-laws didn't get saved. You know why? Because the Bible said they took it as a joke. The, the revelation that God gave me, when God sent people to warn into your life, when you warning, saying, okay, repent, um, t t turn your life around. Um, God's going to come soon. If you don't repent, you, you um at risk of going to hellfire. You're at risk of your soul getting destroyed. Don't take it for a joke. And... What I mean, somebody telling you, oh, you, you got to repent because you don't want to go to hell. And then you don't got to be like, <laughs> she said, I'm a, <laughs> oh, he said, I'm a, <laughs> you don't got to do all that. However, if somebody tell you something, but you're not taking that initiative to say, oh, yeah, okay, they are right. I need to get my soul right. And it's a possibility. If I don't get it right, this can happen. So I don't want this to happen. So, yeah, let me take the initiative to, you know, start seeking God and get my life right. That's what I mean by you take it for a joke is you keep on doing the exact same thing you did before they even gave you that warning. N nothing ain't changed about you at all. You're not trying to make a change. You're not trying to seek God. You're not trying to read your word. You're not trying to make a commitment to God. You're not trying to do any of those things. That's what I mean by taking it for a joke. You can't take your soul for a joke because when um, Lot's sons, son-in-laws took it for a joke, they got destroyed right beside the Gomorrah. I explained I was having a brain aneurysm when I was on the ambulance. It was a, a, a paramedic driving, but it was also a paramedic in the back with me. And I was telling him, like, my, my face my face burning because my face is, like, really burning to the point I was kicking and screaming. It felt like my face was being electrocuted. I don't know how I felt to get electrocuted. I never want to. But, it, yeah, it, it felt like that. My face was on fire. So, I was telling the pyramid, like, my face, my face burning. So, I don't understand that you got to keep, like, stuff calm. You got to be calm and alert, like, the patient, different things. That person wasn't being calm. That person was, like, taking it for a joke or what I was saying was like, I was pretty much just talking out of my mind and it wasn't as severe as how I was making it seem. I bet you when I passed out and temporarily died, he knew it wasn't a joke then. I don't know, like, on jobs like that, if you can get in trouble, if, you know, a patient trying to tell you certain things. However, that was a few years ago and I don't know if they do that now. However, if you do do that now and there's like proof that the patient tried to tell you certain things and you took it light, what if you would have got in trouble for that because I tried to tell him and he didn't listen. He, he took it light. You see how when Lot warned his son-in-laws how they took it light, how they thought it was a joke, how they took it for granted. You see how they got in trouble with their soul? They got destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah. But by you hearing this word, it's not for you to take it light at all. It's not for you to, or even, not even, they don't have to be this, just this word. It can be from anybody that God brings into your life. It could be a potion read. It could be there's something you feel in your spirit like, okay, I feel like that God telling me to change. 
even if you look in a movie, I always like to reference the movie too, The Color Purple, with Suge Avery. Um, she always was brought up in church, but you know, she back, backslid. But all it took for her singing a, a secular song, but she heard a church song from like down the street at her church, you know, her church before she, you know, she, all she did was hear a song and she felt in her spirit like, okay, God, I know you calling me. And I'm pretty sure she heard them singing a lot of times because that's, the church wasn't as far from um, where she be at. I'm pretty sure she heard them a lot, but she never like was printing her heart, okay, I need to change my life around or whatever like that. But that time when she heard them, like she felt in her heart, and when she heard it, she, she didn't say, "Oh, I just feel it," and I'm just keep on. She said, "Okay, I, I'm gonna get my life around. I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna turn my life around, get my life to God," and that's what she did. So, if you're hearing a warning, if God's putting something in your spirit, like, "Okay, sin, you need to turn your life around," do so. Don't take yourself for granted because hell is real. You don't want no parts of that. Just imagine. I'm pretty sure a lot of us got burned by a stove even men included how you felt when you got burnt by soul you took your hand back and said ouch and like yeah it left a mark and you was in pain imagine if your hand was on the stove and you tried to move it and you couldn't move it at all but hell is actually worse it's your whole body not just your hand and then it's forever with, with the stove you can like move your hand real quick not in hell you can't move your body real quick. It's forever. Do we want to be burning forever? You got to look at it. Nobody wants to say so damned. Sodom and Gomorrah was damned because it was evil and wicked. Do you want your soul to be damned because it's evil and wicked? Because you didn't accept Jesus Christ? And I said in another video, it's great. It's great that you say you accept Jesus Christ. It's a great thing, but you have to live it as well. Don't just accept him and keep on doing the exact same thing that you've been doing with no change at all. That's not going to work. So, yeah, take heed to this warning, y'all. Like, God laid it on my spirit. I thought I was just reading um, about, you know, about a lot because of something dealing with me or whatever like that but god had it for another reason so please take heed to this message y'all okay hopefully y'all can hear me i really wasn't going to talk about this but i feel like it ties in perfectly with you know the scenario what i'm talking about just recently i found out that someone that i know passed away i actually met them a few years ago i'll just put them into my life for a reason now that i see so every once in a while i'll you know check on them you know see how they're doing the person know about my channel they know about you know, when we talk about god they, they know about all of this this person is like well they were like a morally good person like there wasn't you know they didn't do no evil they didn't go out and hurt people they didn't do any of that at all H however i said in a lot of videos morally good is not going to get you into heaven i know because i used to be that person just thinking you be morally good and you good but you're not good with God with just being morally good. You, you got to be born again. You got to be saved. Live for God. However, it was like certain things that they probably was dealing with. Uh, recently, it was something that well, I guess was really, you know, major. I don't know if they knew how to deal with it because I don't know the exact reason. However, if you've been following me, you know that I've also been going through things as well. I still go through some things. However, the only difference is I have Jesus to, to keep me grounded. When I'm feeling like I, I don't know what to do, I, I know I have Jesus to be my rock and comfort me. But certain people, if they don't have Jesus Christ, they're not going to know how to deal with certain situations. And it's going to pretty much make them fold those situations. And, you know, by folding it, it could result to different things that's ungodly. And I always mention God to them. Now, they, you know, agreed as things, but I don't know. So, like I said, this last time, I guess something major hit their life. And, like I said, I just found out recently that they passed away. So, of course, of course, I was sad. But it also made me think, like, I'm pretty sure when God comes to them. Like I said, I don't know the standard with them and God, so I can't say. However, I know what God is going to say at the end of the day. When he comes to them and say, you know, I have put shantae in your life i don't know if he put anybody else in their life but i know for a fact he put me in their life for a reason i see now and she talks to you about god and different things like that you, you can't make an excuse did you take that warning even recently 
Mama I told you on, I think it was the pit, and how I said I tried for so many places, and I kept getting denied. Now, the one of the places that I, I think when I told you I had the dream, and then later on I got the email about an hour later saying you got denied. Well, for that place, I had two people that I know, and one of the persons was the person that actually passed away just recently. I had two people pretty much like vouch for me and say that they were my landlord now god forgive me for lying like that like i said i know it had a bad history and i didn't want to put like certain things on my you know list and that they call and different things like that so i did use them even though the places that i did have on there um was an accurate i think one of them was accurate address yeah i think only one of them was accurate address I think the person that actually passed away was an accurate address, but, you know, just saying that was my landlord and different things, I was telling the Phil, and I said, God forgive me, and like I told you, I did a video, which I didn't release, and it was on 321, and it was like God was telling me, um, I'm going to get the glory, and then when I got denied, I thought about it again, if I would have got, uh, if I would have got accepted for that place, not only would I have looked like a liar to the other person that who I had watched for me as landlord but also too or Jesus wouldn't have got the glory they would have pretty much got the glory because it's like okay you, you got that place because we pretty much vouch and you know said we was your landlord and they call and you know we vouch and that's pretty much how you got the place so like I said God wouldn't have got the glory they would have so when I got denied I was a little sad but it's like at the end of the day I was still kind of happy because I didn't want to, you know, come off as a liar, but I also didn't want to have other people look like they got the glory instead of Jesus. So I know telling the person when I seen them again, I told them uh, this before I had got the place I'm right now. I was telling them like, you know, they didn't go through, and they actually didn't. People actually didn't even go through with it as a reference because um, the dates on there. They said it was too far off, like they needed something like more current, and the dates on there was too far off. So I told the individual that, and they was like, okay, and I said, I mean, that's not, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not what God had for me anyways. And they were like, yeah, you read about that, so thank God for that. However, you know, we had that conversation, and that was like a month ago, I think. You know, I gave him a hug and everything, and that was it. And then just recently, like I said, I found out that he passed away. So like I said... Do you take the heeding and the warnings that God give you, even if it's regarding people that God put into your life and to minister the word to you? You got to start taking, taking that for granted. So you got to take the heedings that God give. So I'll take it for a joke. And like I said, it don't have to be a joke as far as laughing and, you know, laughing at people. It could be as far as taking a joke as not heeding the word, not heeding the message, not listening. So y'all, y'all got to take heed in. So, like I said, I didn't want to um, mention that. However, like I said, I feel like this tied perfectly with this message. And I actually wanted to speak about this, too. But I guess it felt I really wasn't. But since this happened, it's like, in this scenario, yeah, I had to speak about it. So, yeah. Take the heat, y'all. Make sure you like, make sure you share. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel, y'all. Y'all have listen.